academic integrity. It's Friday, the 11th of September. It's the prodigious, the prominent Professor Johnson at Proclamation News and Gavin's. We're going into my second part of the year of investigating the social world one, edited by Karim Mergy, the D1103 module. We're going for the introduction. Introduction in this chapter, the study of the home is approached through two of the key concerns of psychology, sociology, sorry, social change and social divisions. How does a home provide, provide a setting through which social change is evident? In ways does a home reflect and reproduce social divisions? To help you start thinking about this, look at activity one. I'll give you like, you know, some key elements how I propose to this task. Activity one, make a quick list of the places you have lived. The reason for moving and which ones felt most like home to you. I mean, you can live with different people. I mean, you live with your mum and dad, you've got brother and sister, and there's like squabbling going on, who's the best, who's the best children. That can sort of put you off for your destiny. You want to be... You want a legacy, don't you? You want a legacy. You got everyone's got different views. Everyone's got different gains, different wisdom. They want to, they want to gain. You know, you'll be prosperous. Running prosperity matters. So obviously, living with your parents ain't always the key to your success. If you want to work on progressive progression, you've got to find your mindfulness plus no activity equals creativity. That's what I always say. And you need to find that happy surrounding. I find the mind, you need to find mindfulness. Where you've got people, too many people, where you can't find yourself. The discussion. A, think about places you have lived may lead to you to consider the ways in which there are or could be many reasons and causes for moving home. Changing jobs, moving to other countries or other parts of the same country, or changing family life and are some examples. These suggest that moving home can be prompted by personal issues. Example, the birth of a new child or economic issues, Ch changes in the job market. How these sorts of personal and individual changes can be related to a bigger uh, soci sociological picture is taken up by the next section. I mean, I'm the middle born child. So when I was going for my, you know, just going for my teenage years, my brother was born. So a new born child, where t the tension was around my younger brother, which is solely, solely the companion. You got a newborn child. You have your parents have to put their put their time and effort into the newborn baby. So you know, obviously, maybe I missed out a little bit of little bit of encouragement because due to a newborn baby. It's not a big major thing because I'm a mature student and I'm gaining my academic integrity in later life, and I'm happy to be here. Um. B, the question of who does not, what kind of work in the home begins to bring out issues of in, inequality, in particular gender inequality, but also inequalities due to class and age. Like I've got a sister, maybe my sister's a bit more favoured by my mother because women strike to women, don't they? Perhaps. Maybe not. I'm just saying. This will be explored later in the chapter by introducing ideas about uses of time and space in the home. The charge and presence and the role of technology in the home can also help us to identify social change and provide a way of understanding social divisions and inequalities. How technologies structure time and space in the home is a key concern of this chapter. The dimensions time and space are useful in understanding social divisions and inequalities between groups of people in the home. The term social division refers to entrenched, per persistent and continuing differences between groups of people, which sociologists, I mean, especially like with mother and daughter, they share, you know, like combing hair, sharing makeup, you know, it, 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 different things like that. And my bro me and my brother, we've got a bit of a interlink with a father role, I suppose. Dad goes and cuts the grass, we help. So, you know, that sort of thing, if you, that's the sort of thing I'm looking at. I'm not trying to put my family down because that's not the way I do things. I had a great legacy. I was an ex-professional boxer in my time. Failing my second G Raynaud's disease, I won't, you know, ignore that because it's a key, key element to my, why I haven't been so successful in being a great athlete, which I could have been if I didn't have Raynaud's disease. Anyway, page six, chapter one, exploring home 
sociology, social divisions and social change. Explaining terms or categories such as social class, gender, age, ethnicity, race, sexuality and disability. I've got, I had to cut that off. I've got to bring it back in a minute. Sorry about that, guys. I'm, um, yeah, explaining terms or categories such as social class, gender, age, ethnicity, race, sexuality, and disability in these categories of social division. Patterns of inequality tend to reoccur over time and across generations, although some degree of social change is possible, meaning people are not necessarily trapped by the circumstance at birth. An overall picture of inequalities between groups persists over time and reasons for their patterns are more of a matter of individual or group decisions. They are referred to as social. It is important to add these categories do not exist in a separate compartment but are connected in various and different ways. They intersect and will be highlighted at various points throughout this chapter. I mean I've got children so they're all growing up. You get that age where you sort of bond with one but not the other because of the age. And the things they do, they interact with way one of my kids like boxing, the other one didn't. The other one liked playing games and that wasn't really my forte at the time. But now I'm very my intellect's wider spread, I can I can adapt to a lot of things. I've got more time in my hands and more I generate more generosity with pleasurable just speaking and listening, understanding. I mean this this academic integrity has really helped me think out of box, like artwork, things that I've never done. I did do when I was younger, but now I'm growing older, I'm enjoying it. The chapter will draw on a home as an example to examine social change and social division. Provide a range of qualitative and quantitative evidence to explore social change and social divisions. Show how so, uh, sociologists draw on ideas of time and space to explore differences and inequalities in home, particularly in relation to gender and age divisions. Just like this place is explaining. Social one, home and social change examines historical changes in household comp composition and a link between personal lives and social trends. Section two, all mods and cons, time and inequality focus on the pr uh, practices of Doing the laundry and relation to gender and the uses of domestic time. Say if I was into doing washing, my mum was teaching me. It takes solely away from my father because maybe my father didn't like the washing, perhaps. Just for instance. I was more bonding with my mum and not my father. Uh, section 3. Space at home from codes to zones explores in in intergenerational differences regarding the use of home space time and space and gender and generation frame this chapter exploration of social divisions in the home home and social change page seven social change includes both large and small scale changes the home is an interesting setting in which change can be observed living in cities or towns relationship choices marry or not to have children or not, or to live together in small or larger units are all instances that contribute to the sense of social change when considered at a large scale of societal level. Think about the places you have lived in activity one may have led you to consider how the places have changed. For example, you could have moved for parental home to live with friends or partner. You may have had your own family home or lived on your own. Perhaps you have thought the people you live with in each of the or each of the homes you had, the changes of your own home living combined with many other individuals. Home life gives a pattern of what home life is like on a larger scale. At a national level, the composition of the home and how it was changed over time provides a way of tracing social change. To look at this large scale survey, data provides a snapshot of household composition at various points in time. Exploring changes over time reveals the nature of direction of social change. Activity 2 will help you see this point. I mean, social change. I moved out, had my first child when I was 21. I lived with my partner and I was the man in the house. And you take all the aspects of life that your mum and dad have taught you. You know, you've grown up, you're watching them do the laundry. You're watching them cut the grass. You're watching them be parents you, so you just it comes second nature that you do that to your own children, and that's the way I grew up. I'm a mature student, so you know I've been through 
I've been through a lot. I've been split of marriage, split of relationships. You move home to another home. What you know, it's a it's chemistry imbalance, sort of a broken home. You pick up, move on. Some of us, some of us go through absolute purgatory of life. We get, especially men, get put in places like homeless shelters. You get put for the mill of life. But it's how you come back, fighting spirit that makes you maintained and comprehend at the highest divine elevation. I'm on page eight, chapter one, exploring home, sociology, social division, and social change. Activity two, we're gonna look at data in table one. You may have noticed that some boxes do not contain data. Why do you think this is? Two columns, 1979, 2007, add up to 99 rather than 100. This is due to rounding down to give whole numbers in table. Uh, and now in B, now you can identify which is the largest change in the household type over the period from 1949 in 2011 table 1.1. Household consumption in the UK from 1949 to 2013 in relation to marital status on the presence of children. 1949, we've got 5% and single person. And married, cohabitating with no child is 16%. Married, cohabitating child... I think that's from no greater than 15 is 37 percent then we've got married cohabitating child 16 and under zero married cohabitating child 15 and over is 19 married cohabitating child 16 over is zero and others is 23 1979 is single person 23 married cohabitating no child in 1979 is 27. So we're going up, up the years, over years, over time. 50, 60, 70, 20 years gap, looking at the social change and the percentage of change. Married capitating child under 16 is 31. Married capitating child under, over 15 is zero. We had 19 year, uh, 20 years before. Married capitating child, 16 over is seven. Others 11, I'm not gonna bore reading on some of the boxes in Table 1 are empty because there were changes in collection of data measurements used. For example, in 1949, data was collected on children over and under 15 years of age. After that point, the data was collected on children over and under 16 years of age. So I've just given you, you know, a bit of a run-through. Table 1 shows that there's been more than tripling in the percentage of a single-person household in 1949 on, and 2013. On page 9... Home and social change. There's a slight difference in the way of exploring these changes. Table 1 2 looks at the total number of people in households in the UK over the same period. Number of persons in household, all ages. We've got from uh, 2 up to 6 or more. Number of people in households. So 1949, I'm going to do uh, for the two persons in a house, household. 1949, we have 22. 1971, 31. 2007, we have 35. 2013 is 35, so it hasn't gone no greater for two people in a household. Three people in a household, 1949 is 26, 1971 is 19, 2007 is 16, 2013 is, is 16. So they're keeping, it's like a population growth of the three people to a household. They're keeping it at, they've got a, they've got a good rhythm, haven't they, to keep the population growth in the household um, development to a T there, between 2007 to 2013. Four people in a household, 21 in 1949. It's 1971, 18. 2007 is 13. 2013, 14, it's gone one up. It's gone one up. Five people in a household, 1949 is 13. 1971 is eight. 2007 is five. 2013 is four. So that year, they're getting the, the margin down. Six or more, 1949 is 13, 1971 six, 2007 is two, and 2013 is two. Look at the figures in table one in this table. None of the columns add up to 100. This is because the figures to a single person household have been removed from table one, two. Can you see how to read a table 1.2? To work out the percentage of a single person household, look at the columns for 2007 and 2013. By adding up the percentages in a column for 2007 and 2013 in table 1 2, you see that the total 71% means out of 100. 
So to find the missing amount, 100 take away 71 equals 29. You can double check this by looking back at table 1, 1, where you can see that percentage for single person household in those years are also recorded as 29. Tables 1.1 and 1.2 present a simplified version of the data collected in the government surveys. Quite often such tables aim to present or highlight the main trends to show everything might produce a very complicated table. Both tables show the same trend or pattern, an overall marketed decline in the number of people who make up a household, although there has been very little changes in the figures between 2008 and 2013. The overall trend is for the de uh, decline in the numbers of large households and an increase in the number of single person households. Although the data in these tables provide a guide about the nature and direction of social change, it does not give us any explanation for the causes of those changes. Sociologists stress that there were, are many causes that explain these changes, including changes of infertility behaviour. The decision about when to have children and how and how many to have changes in expectation of relationships and marriage increase in divorce. Some of these may produce smaller households, but divorce and the formation of new relationships and new families could lead to an increase in larger blended family households. Page 10, this is, other factors to consider include a lack of housing stock, unaffordability of housing and a state of the economy and debt levels. Increased life expectancy can also affect the change household composition and the rise of single person homes. The latter is sometimes discussed in rather sensationalist terms such as demographic to bomb. This phrase makes the fact there are considerable difference in how long people live depending on regional location and social class. The data in tables 1.1 and tables 1.2 shows that the makeup of the households and families have been changing over several generations. These changes are social concerns for a variety of reasons, such as demands on housing and health services, the welfare of children, loneliness and social isolation, and the balance between the, work, between the working and retired populations. This list signals how a private issue is, at the same time, also a matter for policy, politics and economics. The images of nuclear family, once so far familiar in TV operas, have been drastically altered in various ways. The causes and consequences of those changes are argued about the people with the different viewpoints on whether such changes are good or bad. A good or a bad thing, personal and career choices, as well as the house market. House and policies policies and state of the economy are bound up in patterns in tables 1.1 and 1.2 indicate. Therefore, personal choices are never independent and broader economic, social and political context in which they occur. Macro sociology looks at large scale changes in society and the economy such as industrialization and urbanization and sees them at leading to a rise in nuclear family and a decline in the size of households. However, micro sociology sees a small scale decision that each of us makes about our families. I mean, let's look at that again. I mean, you know, how our welfare and government change society where they try and keep the number of household levels down, maybe to keep the policing down as well. Because you've got too many people in the household, it could cause, you know, disturbance through the family, cause violence in an urban urban built up estate depends on the mixture of the family you know a big household could cause stress in a family so you've got to look at why they maybe we see in the table why they can't have acted from one one month to be in in um a four household it is well not four household that's a bad that's a bad one five household in 2007 it's five 2013 is four but it started off in 1949 as 13 they cut it down they slowed it down Relationship and work, such as choosing to marry later, not to stay married, to have a certain number of children, or none at all, and so on, as contributing to the formation of home and its median in current times. Rather than one determine the other, macro and micro dimensions of social life intersect in various ways. Sociology interest is in understanding how these processes interconnect. 
The US sociologist, sociologist Charles Wright Mills, 1916 to 1962, emphasised this as the distinct role of sociology to connect biography and history. Neither the life of an individual nor the history of a society can be understood without understanding both. Mills, 1971 to 1959, page 9. Mill states an important role of sociology and bridging and linking individual lives and choices with wider social and historical environment in which they are located while, in his, in his view, ordinary people do not see their lives in their terms. These terms on jobs, on sociology, is to explore and development understanding of those connections. Sociology concerned includes the investigation of social change in the home. Social change can be evidenced through the composition of households over time. Social connects private matters and social issues through the investigations of patterns. Page 12, guys. Chapter 1 still. Exploring home, sociology and social divisions and social change. All mods, cons, times and equality. The section draws on... this. Let's have a little... Have a little. I'll um, have a guesstimate. I like to call it not an estimate. We call it a guesstimate. Social divisions. You can talk about social divisions, like in your family household. You got older brother, younger sister, perhaps. That's your division. You're in the mid, like you're the middle child. You got to try and. Are you the bright spark? Are you the one that was left out? What division are you in in that family environment? Social change. Do you need to make the social change to find your equality? Do you need to make that social change to make that impact in your intelligence, your optimism, perhaps? That's the way I'm reading it. Maybe it's not the right answer, but I'll query that. Query my knowledge, because I'm not always right at everything. It's just the way I like to look, look at things myself. Two, all mods, cons, times and equality. The section draws on some aspects of technology in the home to explore social change and the ways they relate to social divisions of gender and age or generation. Exactly what I said, didn't I? Gender and age. Technology can refer to a wide range of objects in a home, but the focus here is on everyday and or mundane technologies such as washing machines, TVs and computers. Household technologies such as fridges and microwave ovens are near universal household durables, i.e. goods that last several years and can be found in almost all homes. Nevertheless, the use of these technologies is marked by considerable des this par uh, parties and divisions such as social class. For example, in 1956, 42% of all households in the professional and managerial class category owned as a washing machine, but only 13% of women in the skilled, semi-skilled and unskilled household category owned one. Silver, 2010 on page 37. So owning a washing machine in 1956 was a status symbol a marker of your professional class. Today with washing machine ownership, nearly universal ownership has become about more than possessing a, fun a functional object. Owning a brand name or a particular colour or design are seen as signals about lifestyle choices. Thus the type of technology rather than the mere ownership suggests the values of and identities thought to be tied into the possession of particular goods and brands. These values and identities indicate that social division has social, cultural and economic dimensions. Section 2.1 examines home life in relation to a mundane domestic activity, the laundry investigating who washes the household clothes, raises the issue of time and a resource and a source of inequality between the genders. I mean, I live in Hertfordshire, I call, uh, call him Pops, Paul Perrin. I used to, you know, he used to support me in some ways, but then he'd make me wash my clothes in the in in the, in in the shower. But I know how the Africans, have, you know, the Africans are some of them are very very poor economic crisis. You know, water drought and everything. They have to wash their clothes in in the lake, so it didn't bother me. Bit of shower gel, wash my clothes, live the hard life, and I'm still happy. I'm still amicable. I still was reciprocated, and I felt wanted. I felt loved, and I knew no matter what I go through in life. That's why I'm here today, because I've took the big fight in life, taking leaps and bounds, and, you know, I will build wisdom. We had a cooker. The cooker didn't work. I was cooking all my food on the hob. 
like the, like the old kings that have done and the big saucemen. I used to bore my meat and stuff like that. It's the way you get through everyday life. The fighting spirit helps us who we are today. 2.1, doing the washing at home. A wide variety of commonplace objects in the home, ranging from the washing machine to the microwave oven, have been prompted as labour and time-saving devices to make home life easier. The phrase all mod cons, all modern conveniences, originated in the 1930s and was used by house builders and marketing agents to suggest a desirable home containing modern technology. The history of time-saving devices, though, goes back further for over a century. Homes has been targeted by manufacturers and advertisers with a variety of devices. Vacuum cleaners, washing machines, dishwashers, microwave ovens and juices are among those many objects that have been marketed in this way. On page 13, their overall purpose is to make modern life easier by reducing the amount of time and effort involved in everyday activities. This concerns with speed and convenience indicates how central time is. It is something to be saved and not wasted or expended. Domestic technology, therefore, offers a good way of exposing use of time in the home. Figure 1.1, a woman operates a new Hoover washing machine in 1956. It stared at. Remember them? The old school uh, wash machine Hoover. 1956. Laundry technology in a home provides one illustration through which to examine whether time can be saved or rather relo relocated or reproportioned. Further questions to be asked are those labour or work is saved and how different uses of time as a resource contribute to social divisions. This example demonstrates how sociologists study. Do you reckon my grandma and my granddad had them? Absolutely. When Winston Churchill was alive, 1945, they'd had them at a later date. Page 14, exploring homes, sociology, social divisions and social change. Everyday routines in particular, gender patterns of work and time in home. In the early 1900s in the United States and Europe, electric motors were attached to washing machines to move the dolly, a stick inserted into the tub to agitate the clothes and to operate the ringer that clothes were put through to squeeze out the water. Before that, washing was largely a matter of being used a hand wringer and scrubbing brush and a cake of soap. Technology innovations progressed over the following 50 years towards automated laundering. This aim was to reduce effort, time and skill. The washing day troubles are solved. It takes half the time to do laundry and a look at mummy's washing doing itself were headlines in adverts for washing machines, Sylvia 2010. For activity four, spend a few minutes thinking about who does the laundry in your home. How much time does it take and whose time is spent on it. I'll do my own washing. I'm self-maintained, self-independent, self-motivated. Sylvia, 2010, carried out a qualitative study of 24 families in their everyday use of technology in the home. These families were differing social class and ethnicity, located in various towns in England. Some were accessed via a market research company, others by personal contacts and snowballing researcher interviews and participant observe, observation. In the research, the washing machine was chosen as the most useful machine in the home by all women intervie interviewed, except two who choose the cooker. One participant who chose the washing machine, Lindsay Wells, said, I couldn't cope without the washing machine. I'd go into panic stations without the washer. However, when men were asked the same question, responses were quite different. Colin Addison said the TV was not was was the most useful machine in the home and the washing machine the least useful yet the Addison household with two adults and four children one being a baby died 29 did 29 loads of laundry every week other families also had quite intensive laundry practices three household did 20 loads a week six household did between 8 and 14 loads 11 did between 4 and 7 and only three homes were less than three, than less than three loads of washing done weekly. The number of people in the household and the ages of children were significant factors accounting for the numbers of washes done. Chapter two, all mods and cons, time and equality, page 15. The difference in opinion between Lindsay Wells and Colin Addison, 
sets out starkly the difference between women and men in the study. Lindsay couldn't cope without the washing machine, but the mundane process of washing clothes seems to be irrelevant to Colin. Put clothes in the basket and they get cleaned, said Gabrielle. Another man in the study, only five men were involved in a weekly wash. Generally, men used avoidance strategies such as claiming a lack of competence. I might put the clothes in, but I wouldn't risk setting it up without asking Francis because I'm not or fate with how to use it. Or what a setting to put stuff on, said Robert. Daniel said he didn't, didn't usually do the laundry because I've got some clothes mixed up. I didn't do it now. She doesn't let me use it. I don't try to get to know things like that. It's worth remembering. This is an example of a small scale of qualitative research and these uh, findings should be assumed to hold true for everyone. I mean, men in households change over time. I think a lot of men, like, even like myself, it changes on supporting feminism, on like qualities, you know? We're equal, so reciprocate, it's amical. Um, in a household, it's amical. You know, I used to live my partner in Hertfordshire for a little while. Um, and, you know, I used to try and help her. I used to do the washing up. I used to try and help her do the cleaning, help her out with her kids. It's what you do. You, it's, it's about equalities. It's not about men being bone idle and selfish. Today's modern world has changed. Two points of interest emerge from, the, from this. First laundry activities in the home have changed considerably because of technology improvements. Another point of getting is that the machines made cleaning less and heavy duty. They also had the effect of changing ideas about standards or cleanliness. Thus, some have argued actually making more work for women. So all well as saving time, it appears that domestic labour and saving devices can have the effect in reapportioning uh, re time. Gershony, 2000 captures the essence of the point. When the laundry server disappeared and we bought a washing machine, who had to work that machine at home? Page three. Second, even the technology development appears to make life easier. It marked by social divisions, particularly those of gender. Studies from the 1900s and 2000s, Cockburn and Ormond, 1993, Morley, 2000, indicate there were a common view that white goods, fridges, washing machines, tumble dryers and dishwashers were regarded as women's goods and for housework, while while black goods, TV, video players and games consoles were treated as men's goods and for entertainment. I mean, isn't it ironic? It's like that in a lot of households. A woman will do the washing and the ironing. I mean, I like to iron my own bed sheets. I like to iron my own clothes. I like to, I do all my own stuff. I, like, I live on my own. And I do, but I've always liked to be like that. It may have not always been like that throughout all my relationships because a woman does like to take over in that department because that's how it is through traditions. But I'm not like that. I like to do my own, my own you know, my own quantity of the relationship. In a relationship, you divide. A gentleman will make equalities feel reciprocated. Exploring home, sociology, social division and social change. Page 16. Time and equality. The practice of laundry and domestic washing machine indicate that routine and everyday activities reveal patterns of inequality in the home. Feminist sociologists have long argued that housework remains an invisible and unpaid activity, even though it is vital to maintaining and enabling the world of paid and un uh, employment. Silver 210, trees and... Jobnik, 2010, housework is also a highly gender-divided activity, with women doing most of it. Time use research provides a way of looking at the gender divide, and the home is a key setting where time inequality, both its extinct and changes its, in its nature, can be seen. I mean, my father, and um, you know, mother and father, my father does the cooking, he does a lot of um, domestic jobs as well, so it equals a load. And that's why I am exactly what I'm, you know, I'm trying to get at. The way of discussing time may seem unfamiliar or even strange. Social scientists make an important distinction between a natural or linear or social or actual time. The terms time hours suggest that experience of time is a linear movement from beginning to end. 
Over the course of lifetime, however, the social or actual experience of time is more cyclical and repetitive. Days, weeks or even years are marked by repetition and routine. The home is a space where routine and repetition are commonplace, so it provides a use, useful site to investigate time use. In examples from Sylvia's 2010 study, doing the laundry was not equally shared. Men and women had very different ideas about most useful or valuable machines in a home. In examples, so doing a study of laundry was not equally shared. Men and women had very different ideas, most useful valuable machines in their home. And it was evident equality in time spent on laundry. It could be argued and reflected in particular arrangements in the household. Silver research, it is not possible to generalise about the household from a small scale study. To make a wider, wider argument about time and equality, it is necessary to look to other sources of evidence and other forms of research that co uh, co co uh, corroborate how time is divided in the home. The following two examples utilise quantitative research to examine time and equality and gender. First, say 2005. Presence and asses to co competing arguments on time use in the United States from the 1990s and to the 1900s. The first argument is that the difference in time used between men and women are converging or knowing because men are doing more unpaid work, housework and less paid work while conversely women are doing more paid and less unpaid work. The other opposing viewpoint she considers is that women have less leisure time because they have substantially increased paid work while men have only marginally increased unpaid work by comparing the national time use surveys. Sarah found that across the time period, men have indeed increased the time they spend on unpaid work. She also discovered that the nature of that unpaid work has changed. With more emphasises on activities such as childcare and cooking, however, Sarah found that 30 minute per day free time gap between men and women still exists, underlining the persistence of time inequalities. Second in the study in Australia, Bittman and uh, colleagues 2004 analysed a time use survey to investigate time spent using four specific technologies the microwave oven, dishwasher, tumble dryer, and lawnmower. This is page 17, by the way. All mods and cons, time and quality. The research found that domestic technologies such as microwave did not save women time, and time spent on food preparation was not reduced overall. When it came to laundry, the study found that it was highly gender segregated activity with women's time accounted for 88% of all the time spent on it. In contrast, men's time accounted for 57% of all time spent on gardening and ground cares. In terms of actual time use, none of the technology re uh, reduced the amount of time women spent on housework. Tumble dryers increased the time they spent on laundry, while the microwave oven and dishwasher had no significant impact on time spent. So domestic technology may reduce labour, but it does not appear to reduce gendered time inequalities. Taken together, these studies support the argument that women men use time differently. Gender is significant to variation of time because women's generally subordinate economic and social positions result from persistent social divisions that constrain their use of time. Although change does not occur over time, the gap between men's and women's domestic activities remains significant. Time use patterns are linked to due time schemes of homework, unpaid and paid labour. The home is marked by social divisions in both time availability and use. In this way, time inequality is both instrument of social division and a consequence of it. The next section explores another aspect of the home in which social divisions are evident space. Page 18, exploring home, soci sociology, social division and social change. Summary, technology use in home is marked by gender division time, use data, clear divisions between women and men. Time use in home is an important measure of gendered social inequality. Page 19, space at home from codes to zones. 
Ch um, chapter three, space at home from clothes to zones. So you've got your servant quarters, family living area, kitchen and scullery, where you probably find the women mainly by the sounds of things according to this book. Social side to think about space in a way that is quite different from it in everyday uses. French philosopher and sociologist Henry Lev Bervery, 1991, argues that space is not inert or natural, rather it is something that is socially produced in an ongoing way and there are um, meanings and consequences attached to it. Suggest that space is produced as representations of space. The formal plan is developed by planners and mark, uh, map plot makers. Spatial practice, the everyday ways in which space is experienced and lived. However, the boundary between them is fluid rather than fixed. This section explores the concept of representation of space and spatial practices in relation to codes and zones in the home. Designs and social codes. The arrangements of space in the home reveals a social code with a different space within a designated and as appropriate for different clients. Look on page 20 now, uh, ladies and gents. Hope you're exploring this book with me, investigating the social world. Exploring home, sociology, social division and social change. Of people, for example, figure 1.2 de depicts the layout of Victorian house. It may look just a house, but divisions of class and gender are encoded in it, into its design. Although not typical for most of the population, a large middle or upper class house of the mid 19th century was designed to have servants living on the top floor. They needed to be physically able and often young to cope in demands of moving around the house. Segregated staircases and hallways were designed to avoid encounters between masters and servants. Some houses even had separate spaces and staircases for women and men. Smoking rooms were men's spaces. Drawing and morning rooms were intended for women. This is when the women didn't smoke or wasn't allowed to smoke back then. These separate spaces signal both a sexual and social class code of appropriate space for men and women and for the lower and upper classes. It wasn't ladylike to smoke back in them days. Now it's more, you know, it's more frequent that you see a woman smoking. The design of home spaces is marked by cultural and historical patterns of class division and gender relations. Historical patterns have varied significantly within and between countries and still do. Today, lack of space concerns about security, heightened in countries of great inequalities. They led to wealthy owners being guarded within the high buildings with gates or walls by cons Concerges, porters and security personnel. However, such priorities can also be marked as a luxury wealth. Even the design of contemporary luxury apartments can reveal a version of the Victorian household model, for instance, the floor plan of an expensive apartment block, figure 1.3. Shows a service entrance and servants, quarters and a separate from the main living area of the family. The presence of live-in servants is not common and most people have simpler living arrangements but the examples of Victorian house and contemporary apartments suggest how space can be viewed sociologi sociologically. sociologically. The design of a home and the arrangement of space reflect on social divisions and social relations within. The floor layouts are examples of the levy burvy representation of space plans that contain and reflect the planners and owners' idolised sense of social relations within that space. If you've got a big family, you need the layout a bit more spacious. You've got your dining room, you've got your lounge, you want it to be separate, you're eating your food, you want a bit of a gap to get round and not, you don't want to be right on top of the people eating either, do you? If you're if you under arrest, do you know what I'm saying? So these, they had high ceilings back then as well. Floor pan of contemporary luxury flat. Lived space in the home. The ways in which space is live, lived in within the home. Spatial practice can be seen in an example taken by Sylvia's 2010 study, which explores the relationship between space, objects and technology in the home. The Churchills are the family, a man, a woman and three children, live in a semi attached Victorian house in London. When Diane, 43, and Mark, 44, started living together, Diane's twin brothers lived with them. The four of them bought the house jointly in the mid 
1980s, later on. Diane and Mark brought the brother, uh, the brother share, one of the twins. Explore, chapter one, exploring home, social ideas, social division and social change. He had married and moved elsewhere, but the other twin, Kirk, still lived in the same house, in the bedsit on the top floor. He had his own bedroom, bathroom. He did his own laundry, worked shifts and was rarely at home. When he was in, he ate with the rest of the family. The children enjoyed his company and watched TV in his bedroom. The family chose to have no other TV in the house, but four computers and games consoles instead. So they had one TV, so they all sat. If they wanted to watch program, they sit and watch together as a family. He wasn't there often, so he probably wanted, when he did have a telly, I want to spend it with his family. He's probably a hard worker, perhaps. They ate their meals together. The way the ways of the household worked had lots to do with how it had involved. Daily life was managed in a egalitarian way. So it was not a, uh, assumed that Diane was responsible for housework. The children were involved in a number of housework tasks. Greg, 15, cooked the evening meal twice a week and usually um, tidied up after meals. Why Hannah, 11 and Alice, 9, unloaded the dishwasher and the washing machine, hung up the clothes to dry, dried some in the middle dryer. This is free space at home from clothes design, page 23. Machines hung up clothes to dry, dried in the tumble dryer, and checked and dis uh, distributed clothes on people's beds once they were ready. Their use of space in the house was also distinctive, figure 1.4. The front room belonged to Diane and Mark, they went into every evening after dinner to have coffee, talked and listened to music or to read. The children at home went there, if invited. Mark's office occupied the second room downstairs. The kitchen dining area had been recently refurbished. This place, this was a place for family sociability. So in the house, there was designated spaces, particularly sorts of relationships. As a family, they met predominantly in the kitchen because the couple had their own private room and Mark's work had its dedicated space. The description of family and their home is an example. It is useful for to illustrate a point without claiming that it is typical. The size of the house and the fact that it contains a separate bed sit fact indicates a higher social class for, of the occupants. The ways in which space is divided and used suggest gender and generational relations within the house. Diane and Mark Churchill were both in a professional executive occupant, occupations. Mark was at home nearly full-time, while Diane worked outside the home full-time. And they dealt with gender roles in flexible ways. Greg and his father were in charge of cooking, while the daughters shared the laundry duties. However, they also employed a female cleaner. The vast majority... This kind of paid domestic work is done by women on quite low levels of pay. The phrase cash rich, time poor captures the sense of wealthy by professional people who draw on domestic assistance to manage their work life balance. In this you know, household we can see like their social chains, they're busy, they're working house, they're working class house, and then they've got when they do have their spare time to go, they spend it in front of the TV. That's how I depict this reading. The role that everyday technology play in church's home is revealing of domestic gen generational art arrangements for all the egalitarian concerns exhi um, exhibited by Di Diana and Mark. The distribution of tasks between the three children was somewhat gendered. The boy cooks, the, girl do um, the girls do the laundry and divided by age. The children could only watch TV in their uncle's bedroom since their parents did not own one. TVs are not one of those widely used consumer durables found in almost every home in Britain. A look at the history on every day's object reveals how much it has changed. Social relations and the use of space in the home. As TV ownership spread in 1950s, a question arose for families about which room it belonged in, as each room already had predefined purposes as spidule. 1992 shows families had to literally make room for the TV in the home.
page 24, ladies and gents. Thank you all for listening. It's Friday, the 11th of September. I'll be back tomorrow with possibly an hour's reading. I'm just going to take my time. I'm not supposed to start until October. We're going to take my time and enjoy the reading. It's Investigating the Social World, module DD103, edited by Karim Merji. Thank you so much. God bless. Take care.